This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Alright, so we are back to more of the Fruit of Grisea. We are continuing Yumiko's route, which we started last week. We are now officially her bodyguard, and we beat up a bunch of guys last time because they were stupid and only attacked us one at a time instead of being like, there's like 20 of us, let's all attack this guy. It doesn't matter if he's a master martial artist, like he's going down. I don't know what's up with that. And apparently this actually lampshaded. They actually lampshaded uh, this. So, they actually might be doing something. It's not just a simple, like, oh, this was unrealistic, but whatever. No, like, he actually is like, that's weird. So it may actually play into the story. So, we are going to continue. Here we are. Cross purposes. 518, let's load the save. Ah, uh, yes, so this is the aftermath of uh, the bodyguard attack. Approach your jobs from a detached perspective. Don't second-guess your instructions. That's the fundamental attitude my employers have beaten into me ever since I got into this line of work. And, in fact, I've never thought too hard about the jobs they give me. I just try to carry out my orders promptly, aiming for optimal efficiency and a near-perfect success rate. My master showed me the ropes, and she was the best. The field commanders, especially JB, give me precise and accurate instructions. I have the skills, and my employer tells me what to do with them. There's nothing to second guess. Never has been, never will be. Uh-huh. Oh, yep. Yeah, she's happy to see us as always. The time, early afternoon. The place, a dormitory lobby. Two residents confront each other across a coffee table. Normally, the word confront shouldn't apply to this sort of casual interaction between classmates, but when Sakaki and Yumiko, when Sakaki Yumiko is involved, it's a different story. To be more precise, the withering power of her glare can transform any encounter into a battle of wills. She looks worried. Sure. However, over the last two days, that fearsome scowl of hers seems to have lost some of its edge. Proceeding slowly towards the door, Sakaki mutters the words without looking in my direction. Her voice is unusually uncertain, carrying more than a hint of genuine concern. Well, she got attacked by, like, 20 dudes the other day. That's... that's gonna rattle you. Don't worry about it. Whatever happens, I'll protect you. <laughs> what if they all attack at the same time next time? What if they bring guns next time? <laughs> it's my job, after all. Ah, uh, she definitely looks jealous. Do these people have nothing better to do than to spy on us? The answer is probably. I mean, the beer bug's not going away. It's gonna just be a part of our society now, like influenza. But the worst is over. It is weird how Makina, like, blends Japanese and English words together. No, you're not going to have it for the rest of your life, but it's going to be a thing that exists in society. But it's also evolved to the point where it's now maybe more contagious than before, but it, the, the actual symptoms are less severe. That's generally how viruses adapt. Why are you eating again? Hey, Galatavor, welcome. There are, all of these girls' lives seems to revolve around what Yuji does, and that's not healthy. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it also affects people different in different ways. So some people will be a little more susceptible to it, and some people will get it and not even know. Together, we walk the usual road to the riverbank. Although I'm not sure if together is exactly the right word, for a number of reasons. First of all, there's our physical distance. Sakaki and I always walk a few meters apart. A few days ago, Sakaki has been purposefully creating that gap, even trying to widen it. But now, if anything, I'm the one consciously maintaining our distance. I'm acting as a close protection bodyguard. Normally speaking, the closer I can be to point-blank range, the better. But at the moment, there aren't any visible threats, and I don't expect any bullets to come flying Sakaki's way. The girl reacts strongly against overprotectiveness, so I'm trying to give her some space when I can. If I can take a step forward and stretch out my hand, I can reach her. That seems the right distance for now. Sakaki soon assumes her sta standard moderately rapid pace, no longer trying to escape me, but not looking back or making conversation either. Her long black hair flutters behind her. I'm pretty sure her hair is purple. I follow at the same pace, careful not to fall behind. Since the first attack several days ago, Sakaki's outings have constantly been attracting similar groups of shady, suited men. Sometimes they're lurking around in the distance, sometimes they try the forcible approach. Their objective seems to be a kidnapping, but obviously that hasn't happened yet. I have been continually scaring them off, physically repelling their abduction attempts when necessary. So, all these guys are like... It's been, it's, this is now like a regular occurrence for them to just hang around. Have we told the principal about this? Have we told the police about this? Or is Yuji just like... No, I got this. I can do it all on my own. It seems very stupid. As such events have become a new part of her daily routine, Sakaki's previously defiant and indifferent behavior started to change as well. Only natural, I guess. No matter how much the girl insists she doesn't care about her life, the experience of real danger probably inspired some fear. Presumably this softening in her attitude toward me is a byproduct of that change in her state of mind. Well, it's weird because, like, we, the viewers of the story, know that these guys are hired by her dad, and, like, they don't actually want to hurt her, they just want to kind of scare her. But Yuji presumably doesn't know that. So it's kind of weird that Yuji's just like, well, this is a thing. He's not like, this seems weird. Hey, Nick! <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the train wreck. That said, Sakaki doesn't seem to have completely sorted things out internally. She's stubbornly continuing her usual trips to the riverbank, and as if refusing to admit that she's afraid of her own safety. For her own safety. And so, once again, I find myself walking along at a regular distance behind her, carefully scanning the area for suspicious vehicles and pedestrians. Nothing for the moment, as usual. So far, the incidents have taken place with very consistent timing. Not that I'm letting down my guard, of course, but if the pattern holds, they won't be showing up until early evening. You're asking the wrong guy. I don't watch anime. When we arrive at the riverbank, Sakaki settles down the road, settles down the ground, and begins taking her art supplies out of the tote bag. After arranging them in front of her with practiced movements out of her hands, she turns back to face me. Right. And after this brief comment, she begins sketching as usual. There's no real need for her to announce this to me, but now that things are slightly less tense, she's making a habit of it. For all her coldness, the girl's given to odd little gestures of courtesy. Comes with being well-bred, I guess. Yeah, you peons. Oh, we get this CG again. The soft sound of the river flowing, the occasional rumbling of the trains passing by, and just when you start to forget it, it's there. The public service announcement mounted on the bridge relays a few reports about missing persons and smog levels. A couple? <laughs> <laughs> and they've all gone disappeared. They've all gone missing out of this ar around this exact point where we are attacked by the shady guys. Also, the police are not around. <laughs> Otherwise, this place is unbelievably quiet. I can certainly understand how it would appeal to a loner like Sakaki. The girl in position, the girl in question, is already absorbed in drawing the scenery before her eyes. She seems to have completely forgotten I'm even here. It's gonna end up falling down at that. Yeah. I don't know how Yuji's not just being like, oh, fall down to the ground. He's like, I'm just going to angle back at a 45 degree angle and just hang out here. Her hand doesn't stop the colored, moving the colored pencil across her paper for even a moment. Pretty impressive. On the sketchbook page, a vivid sky punctuated by wispy clouds takes shape above an expanse of green. As I watch, a faint shadow stirs painfully somewhere deep inside my chest. Damn, not again. 
Fragmented memories, hidden in the cracks and crevices of my brain like pieces of rubbish, react to the slight roughness of the sketchbook paper. She's drawing the sky with deft movements of a light blue-colored pencil, filling the page with shades of cyan. But, from in between those strokes of color, I see something black and ugly oozing out, overwhelming the sky, rotting it away. And when the page is covered in that sickening darkness, a blood-red image begins to take shape above it. A face. I push it out of my head with a desperate effort of will. I don't have to worry anymore. I don't have to think about anything anymore. That's all behind me now, isn't it? Oh, are we going to get his past here? I thought we were going to get Yumiko's past. What's past is past. I should understand that better than anyone. But even now, it finds the smallest gaps in my defenses. It pushes its way effortlessly into the present. Yeesh. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want any part of that. <laughs> I well, I would assume you would have to change some stuff in the game. The game is exceedingly long. Again, there are two routes after this one. Each route is like dozens of hours long. So, unless they're making ten seasons of the anime, like, yeah, you're gonna have to. Yeah, stay away. Stay the hell away. The person I am today struggles with the fiend attacking me. Forcing myself to focus on the reality before my eyes, I draw deep, slow breaths. And in time, the dark entity dissipates. <sighs> A refreshing summer scene spreads out before my eyes once more. <laughs> Yumiko's gone! While we were trying to ignore our past, the guys kidnapped her. <sighs> A refreshing summer scene spreads out before my eyes once more. My body's damp with sweat that has nothing to do with the heat. Won't let me forget about you that easily, huh? I mutter the words to myself too quietly for Sakaki to hear. I can't erase the memories, but at least my voice is erased by the breeze. The wind that blew my words away carries the clouds above slowly toward the sea. The sky itself is beautiful enough to seem artificial. At its very edge, a tinge of red begins to grow. Just as when she began, Sakaki informs me briefly that her sketching mission has concluded. At first, she'd just put away her material silently, then head back without any fanfare whatsoever. But recently, she's been considerately letting me know. I see. Unfortunately, it seems like they're just getting started here. My voice has more than a little tension in it. Sakaki's expression instantly grows gloomy. Yeah. And it seems like we've got some troublesome ones on our hands this time. All it takes is one of these guys to have a gun. And you're screwed. Moving Sakaki behind me as always, I look around the area. Oh yeah! I love this song. <laughs> These ones really do look like trouble. The moment I get a better look at the group clamoring <laughs> slowly down the slope from the vehicles above, I can feel my body growing tenser. It's like something out of a ridiculous superhero drama. The groups coming after Sakaki have been growing incrementally stronger with every passing day. At first, I'd been able to deal with them without breaking too much of a sweat, but by now the fights are starting to get too close for comfort. This pattern needs to change, and soon. It would help if JB was answering her phone. What the hell's going on over there, anyway? There are some strange common features about the behavior of these people. My suspicions about their unnatural actions during the first attack have only grown. I'd wanted to discuss that, as well as hash out some countermeasures to reverse this rapidly deteriorating situation, but my beloved superior has suddenly decided to stop responding to my calls. That's extremely unusual, especially during a mission. Thinking about it from another angle, it could well be that she's deliberately cut off contact after deciding it would be counterproductive somehow. In other words, an implicit measure message to focus on the problems in front of you for now. That said, if this goes on much longer, it's going to get tough. As always, this group approaches only gradually, tightening the net around us little by little, as if to in intimidate. It's all strangely artificial. The in inefficiency of their movements must be intentional, but I don't know what that means, and I can't act on the basis of vague hunches. For now, the only thing I can do is protect Sakaki Yumiko from the fret in front of us. That's my job and my responsibility. They're coming! Dodging the first man's kick by a hair's breath, I grab his ankle and wrench it sharply upward. Yeah! I'm amazed that these guys continue coming back to attack us, even though we kick their butt embarrassingly every time. Before he even hits the ground, I hear the second and third attackers rushing up from behind. I immediately spin around, pull Sakaki to safety behind me, and take a stance. Main character strength. Again, literally 
the only reason that he is surviving this is because they're not just like gain up on him all at once and they're not, and they somehow refuse to bring weapons like guns or tasers or something like that that they can or like tranquilizers like, mm, he's he's very lucky but yes plot armor and all that how many times do I have to tell you I'm fine <laughs> That was deliberate. And in any case, a few bruises are part of the job description. Yeah. <laughs> this this man is in love with his job, even though it's a terrible one. Oh, what do you want? Guys, it's okay. I just had to break up a fight at the Chick-fil-A. It's, it's fine, you know? Nothing to worry about. Oh, brother. What is with this weird get running, like, quote unquote gag where it's just like, oh, they keep throwing stuff in Michiru's mouth and she eats it. It's like, this is not amusing. Why not just say at 11 p.m.? I know, it's, it's, it's really a matter of preference whether you prefer military time or otherwise. Well, we're off to the hallway. <laughs> Good morning, sunshine. Oh, hey, she actually smiled. Wow. It's never your imagination. She's gone? Moments ago, I made my way to Sakaki's room for my usual morning checkup, only to find her door hanging wide open. On very rare occasions, the woman might leave her door open a crack while doing her laundry or something, but I've never seen it like this before. What's more, the suspicious handkerchief abandoned just outside the entrance makes it clear that she hasn't just stepped out for a moment. God damn it, they got me! Unbelievable. To think they were capable of sneaking into the campus and snatching her away without even being noticed. Were those clumsy attacks nothing but a feint? Um, you do realize, Yuji, that there's, like, no campus security at all. Like, Principal is pretty much the only person ever on campus, and she's one woman, and she ain't guarding the door. <laughs> well, <laughs> this happened. Also, I'm pretty sure that... She Yumiko got quote unquote kidnapped by the other girls in the dormitory, not by the weird bearded guys. I'd lowered my level of vigilance somewhat inside the dorm. Since there's almost always other people around, it seems I badly underestimated my opponents. They can't have gotten far yet. I'll just have to hurry. But just as I turned to make my way outside. Sachi? An eerily calm voice from behind stops me in my tracks. The girl looks up at me with a knowing expression on her face. They totally did kidnap her. They're gonna be you better tell us everything about what you're doing with Yumiko, or we're gonna kill her. Because everyone in this game is a psychopath. Sachi, why do you Sachi is possibly the creepiest character in the game. What? I'd always suspected this woman had enough potential to enroll in a national intelligence agency with the right recommendation, but I hadn't even considered the possibility she was already affiliated with some organization. My carelessness came back to bite me on this one. Well, do you have some demand of me or my employer? You kidnapped Sakaki as a bargaining ship, didn't you? Do you expect me to fulfill terms of some sort in exchange for her return? Or perhaps... I did it because I was bored. Say what? 
正確にはその後ろにはアマネさんがいるんですが I'm not even surprised anymore everyone in this game is a terrible person Now it's finally making sense Most likely a certain authority within the dorm rashly pressed Sachi into carrying out some ridiculous scheme resulting in the unfortunate Sakaki being taken captive Something along those lines I can't even begin to speculate about their objective here, but it's probably safe to assume it's some variety of harmless idiocracy. <laughs> or idiocy. But I think idiocracy also works. <laughs> Where's the rebel base? Talk! <laughs> you can't tell me anything about these personal reasons or what have you? I see. In that case, I won't try to force you. Considering Sachi's personality, it'd probably just cause us both a lot of grief if I pushed for more. I'm already completely reassured that it's nothing more than the usual shenanigans, so the details aren't that crucial anyways. Oh yeah, just, just some harmless little dorm fun. You know, kidnapping other people, forcing them to tell us their secrets, you know, very normal stuff. And above all else, sticking my head into a private discussion between women would almost certainly not be helpful for anyone involved. Alright then, I have no idea what you people are up to, but go ahead and do it. I'll be standing it by in my room if you need me. Brother. Sachi offers me a respectful bow, then trots off down the hallway and vanishes silently around a corner. The girl doesn't hang around longer than she has to. She knows how to extract herself when the moment's right. Have to say, I really do think Sachi has some talent in that field. Oh no. I almost forgot about the little comic book sections. <sighs> oh, brother. Yumiko does not look impressed. Which I don't blame her. I didn't say there was anything wrong with it, I more just I forgot that this was a thing that it occasionally transitioned to. Hmm. <laughs> I just want to point out this behavior right here huge red flag like literally tying up someone to make them tell you something you want to know like normal people do not do that good people do not do that <laughs> It's not a valid reason, but... <laughs> this is why you need to be very careful when you ask Sachi to do something for you, because she's like Amelia Bedelia. She will take everything literally. If you say, hey, like, Amelia Bedelia, take out the trash, she'll, like, shoot the trash can. If you say Amelia Bedelia, can you please draw the drapes? She will literally just draw a picture of the drapes. Psychopath! <laughs> like I said, I can't believe the game actually made the murder girl the only reasonable person. I mean, she still was unreasonable when she was trying to murder us, but now she pretty much is the only person with a functioning brain here. You think? Ooh, Silken Healer is now playing... Cool. Hi, Proxima. So, what is the 
本当に恐ろしいわねサチってもういいわよ経緯はどうだっていいからさっさと要件を済ませてくださらないかしら This is ridiculous. はいじゃあ始めさせていただきますわねえったくなんで私がこんな下手に出なきゃいけないのよまだ何かあいいやいや They are really really dragging this out めっつらしいあまねえがちょっと引いてるのよさなんかヘビ対ハブって感じでどっちも迫力満点だけどね。Every single person in this game has multiple screws loose, which is why this this school is basically a school that's built for insane people that can't go to a normal school. And surprise, surprise, when you put a bunch of insane people all together, insanity happens. ミチル様、私ごときが差し出がましいかもしれませんが。ああもう分かってるわよハブもヘビの仲間だって言いたいんでしょ分かってるわよニュアンスよ漢字で受け取りなさいよはい分かりました漢字で受け取りますハブだってヘビだって構いませんいいんだってよよかったなチルチル I don't like that smile on me on Makina's face ムカつくあムカつくあなるわけここしばらくあなたとユージが外に出かけた際必ずと言っていいほどユージがいかにも That's because something happened Namely a bunch of bearded guys in suits、uh, beat me up でもさあいつに聞いたとこで絶対に何も答えてなんかくれなくてねそれであなたに聞こうと思って Would I call this filler? No, I would call this padding It's taking one where it's like okay Like right now, Yuji and Yumiko know that a bunch of guys are trying to beat her up and that Yuji's acting as her bodyguard. The other students don't know about this for some reason, so they're seeing us go out and they're like, What's going on? We want to figure this out. Instead of just saying, Oh, hey, guys, by the way, part of my job is bodyguarding duties and I've been hired on as Yumiko's bodyguard, they'd be like, Oh, okay, that makes sense. No, 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 no. Instead, we need to have multiple times of them being like, I wonder what they're doing. We, let, I know, let's kidnap her and force her to tell us. But before we actually ask her to tell us that, let's have a really long, dumb conversation that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> あなたとユージが何か特別な関係になったとかなら私もそれはあなたたちのことだし介入するつもりなんかないの Yes, it is their business, so why did you tie her up and are forcing her to tell you? もし何か別の事情があるんだったら話してくれないかなって思ったのまあほらなんだかんだ言ってもうちら6人しかいないわけじゃんその中であんましわかりやすく目に見えるような秘密抱えてても気持ち悪いかなって。Yeah, and what you're doing right now is definitely not awkward whatsoever. 佐々木さんが一人でそういうの抱える人なのはわかるけど、今回はもう一人噛んでるしさ。それで。Screw you people! We are allowed to have privacy! そう。あくまでも目的は小佐美くんなの。Yeah, all five. All five of the girls in this are ridiculously thirsty after Yuji. Because he's literally the only choice. Because the only people in this school are insane people. And there's only one guy, so. Yep. That's just how it happens. If she had just said this, like. earlier. All, this would have been unnecessary. A client of her dad? 
私の実家のことも分かるよ、ね、うん。I forget what Amine's family does. ユート、ゴエガヒチヨナケンテ、ツマリワ、サカキサンウォー。そう。略し、ユーカイナドルキョイカラマモルタメニ。ベタシガヒトリデコードスレサイ、ソバニツイテコードトモニスル。トラブルがオコタサイニワ、ジツリョクデコレオハイジュスル。マジであるのね。そんなとんでもない話だ。<笑>まあ、ユミちゃんの家は半端ねえ金持ちだもんな。ありえるのよさ。え、そうなのそれってどのレベルなのわかりやすくケルペソとかで説明してくれない。<笑> It's so rich that they don't use firewood. They just burn money. ミチル様、何ですかその価値基準は。ケルペソアンジャン、現役。アムネスファミリー runs a restaurant, ok。あれと水の秘密を測れば、その家の大きさがわかるって聞いたことないの ?What are you talking about? ミチル様、サチは、この小峰サチは、サミシュー。Stella, you're breaking my heart! えな、なんでよちょっと、なんで寂しいのか答えなさいよあのね、そういう実家こねたは後にしなさいな。今、サカキさんに質問を。No, no, please, keep, can, keep going down these long, pointless tangents that nobody cares about. At least the music is ridiculously good in this VN. ケルペソ、うちは10対1だったな。水が10で、ケルペソ1。Oh, that's right. Michiru's family was fairly well off too. サッチャン。They just didn't really care about her, which is sad. Oh, guys, we're bringing back the classic, hilarious running gag of people giving Michiru food when they want her to shut up. <laughs> well, we put out an ad on Craigslist for someone near、uh, Mahama Academy to be a bodyguard, and he answered immediately. He's just like, oh, yes, perfect. My classic, <laughs> my, my skills are needed at last. I, I, I told you, I, I clean up fast food restaurants, but I also have this other job. Have you ever heard of Batman? That's kind of what he's like. <laughs> he's never going to tell anybody what his job is. Also, why is Yumiko this calm about being tied up? Why the heck would she not be like, you guys are untying me this second, or I'm going to go Hulk on you? Michiru, if you're not, like, secretly growing drugs in your room, you're probably fine. Michiru, I'm not sure if you're not a secret drug in your room. なんだチルチルもう雨なめ終わったのかなめるの早いな視力強い Maybe she just bit the lollipop off and swallowed it all ちょっと人がいかにもうまいような言い方しないでよね Nobody was implying that ってマジなの Well maybe she was but I didn't pick up on it 逮捕するってユージが言ったら一貫の終わりなのよねえ<笑> Game over yeah さっちゃん Oh, yes, another hilarious running gag. They, that's literally the exact same photo, but they just replaced the lollipop with a sandwich. あなたの質問には一切答えるつもりはないけどそれ以前に私と風見くんはそういう関係じゃないし<笑> Yet. そもそも興味もないんだから関連づけるのはやめてくださらないかしら Yet. おいおい
このお客さんまだ白木きる気ですよボスあんな悪いけど姉ちゃんがあいつに惚れてるってネタは山ほど上がってんだかなえ,えもうそっちの話しちゃうの急じゃないもうゲロってもらいやしょうぜボスこのままノラクラと世間話の演奏やってたとこでこの姉ちゃんの口はちっとも開きそうにねえしボスって何よまあいいわじゃあ始めよっか第二部な何ネタってあと Are they gonna be like, Yumiko, we photocopied your diary and read all your secrets? Like, if so. I, I don't want to incentivize murder, but. These people need to be taught a lesson. <laughs> Sachin, I, I would excommunicate them from the school. Oh, I, I cannot stream visual novels without having a large mug of water near. What? Oh, they they took secret photos of her all the time. That might is that is secretly photographing someone over the course of like several weeks to put to. Prove that they're in love with someone. Is that more or less creepy than photocopying their diary? You decide. Either way, it's not acceptable. If they installed cameras in her room, that is creepier than photocopying the diary. なんとも言えない表情です。口も半分ほど開いていますね。You know what? You know what I want this scene to turn into? They they go on on how unbelievably creepy they are. Then Yumiko escapes. She still has her box cutter, cuts herself free, and then just goes completely, <laughs> just goes completely bonanza on everybody. That's that's what I'm hoping this turns into. <laughs> そしてこれは河川敷から帰る最中少し後ろを歩く風見さんの方を横目で見ながら物上げな表情を浮かべています yeah, these people are patently insane. この顔の赤さは決して夕焼けのせいだけではないそれはきっと What I want to know is the person who person or people who wrote this visual novel Were they intentionally trying to portray them in a light where everyone was like, wow, these people are absolutely insane? Or do the people who made this visual novel think this is normal behavior? I really hope it's not the second one. しかし、何よりもこの表情、見てください。もはや、ことが済んでしまったかのような。Yeah, I, I mentioned when I started streaming this that I'm like, I could not, like, I, I consider myself to be a fairly easygoing person and not that hard to get along with. I could not be friends with any of the girls here. They are, they are all terrible people. Did you hire a, a PI to follow Yumiko around? Mitru finally finished eating the sandwich. 
can't tell if Michiru is actually this dumb or if she's just faking being dumb. Even after playing her root, because it feels like there was a bit of both. Yeah, they're literally just replacing the <laughs> the image in her mouth. This is like 10 different ways of completely unacceptable. Really? What is your intention of kidnapping her and putting her through this? To be good people? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. And thus, the biggest lie in history was told. Screw off! I don't want your help! You think? No, you don't need her confirmation. All of this is completely unacceptable. The only two people who are coming off of this, like, innocent are Yumiko, who is the victim here, and Michiru because she really hasn't done anything other than eat food people keep shoving in her mouth. I expect at least one serious injury after this. Well, it's hard to get a robot to love you. I feel like Yumiko's fallen in love with Yuji a little easily. Like, I kind of thought Michiru also fell in love with him too easily. Whereas, like, Amine's in love with him because she just first EAF. Makina because, well, she's very screwed up in the head. And then Sachi because he and she actually had known each other before coming here. But this seems like a little fast, like, oh, he's my bodyguard, now I love him. It's like, uh, uh, that's that seems like kind of lazy writing. Just, just pointing that out there. <laughs> ま、誰かに守ってもらったことなんて一度もなかったから。たとえ仕事とはいえ、自分を守ってもらえるってだけで、すごく嬉しい。風見君には迷惑な話でしょうけどね。自分でもこの感情が何かなんてわからないし、ど
Okay, well, Yumiko, you might be in a bit of a t position, but the one thing I absolutely would not do is take advice from literally anybody in this room with you on how to pursue Yuji. Do not, because these people are psychotic. She makes a fair point. Wow, Amine, your your introspection is just truly astonishing. This is an exceptionally long manga section. Most of these comic book panel sections only last for, like, a couple minutes at most. Why are you the way that you are, Makina? I repeat, don't take advice from anybody in this room. Ironically, Michiru was the one who had the best advice, even though it wasn't advice. Make him dinner. That can go a long way. This is where Yumiko just needs to break for the ropes with her bare arms. Also, Yumiko, you don't appear to have feet. Well, she got untied eventually. To be fair, Proxima, I'm doing this to myself, so I really don't have anyone to blame but myself. You guys are kind of... Well, actually, I guess you guys can leave Twitch chat whenever you want. <laughs> if you don't want to stare at the girls for uh, 40 minutes. What's wrong? <laughs> What's wrong? Are you? Do you have any idea what I was just put through? Like, everything's wrong. Right. My apologies. A certain individual directed me to observe you more carefully, you see. Couldn't go about it any other way. Yuji, if you're taking advice from Amine the Awful, you really should not. <laughs> well, she's tall, with red hair, she's super annoying. Uh, sorry, but I've been sworn to silence. Not sure that would be such a good idea either. I have a feeling the answer might irritate you somewhat. But if you're really that interested in hearing someone else's groundless speculation regarding your physical characteristics... <laughs> I am a robot. Beep boop beep boop. I see. In that case, I'll continue my observations. That's so. My apologies. Don't take advice from the people who tied you up and took creepy photos of you! What the F is this? What's with all the heavy sighs? Amen, Yuji. You know why? Because this game is cringe. The sooner we get to her flashback, the better. What on earth is going on around here, anyways? <laughs> 